What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some incorrect and correct examples of route running. So we're going to be showing a bad example of a route. We're going to be talking about what the wide receiver did wrong, and then we're going to be showing a good example of that route and how you guys can apply this to your own game. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you guys would like to know a daily workout schedule, you should follow this offseason. Check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. You'll get access to daily gym exercises and on-field wide receiver drills that you can do with sets reps and we give you an example of each exercise we map out everything like monday tuesday wednesday thursday etc so if that interests you check out that very first link below let's get started with this video so first route we're going to be looking at here is a 10 yard out versus inside shade press coverage so this wide receiver does not really get skinny on his stem so this is kind of a bad example of the route even if this was a good ball even if this ball was put kind of accurate i still don't think this thing will be complete because because of the angle the wide receiver took. So anytime that you have to run a route, whether it's an inside breaking route, whether it's an outside breaking route, we always want to try to get hip to hip with the DB, aka getting skinny or getting vertical. Because, you know, like obviously like he's running a 10 yard out, right? Obviously at this purpose of the route or this point of the route, excuse me, my purpose is to restack him. My goal is to be able to get over the top, get him trailing my back hip so I could give him move and I could win. But if I can't restack, I have to get skinny. So we got inside shade press. This wide receiver tries to give a little move inside. Now, could he have sold the move better? Absolutely. Could have given a little bit more of a body fake to the inside to try to hold that DB's leverage, but he doesn't. And he just kind of takes off and runs to the outside. This wouldn't be that bad because this DB does start to open up the gate a little bit if he would be running closer to him, getting hip to hip and actually pushing vertical. But you have to understand when we were running an outside breaking route, like a comeback route, like a 10 yard out hell even a corner or maybe even a fade we need to give the quarterback space to throw me open so if i come off the line of scrimmage and i just try to run away from this guy i am cutting down the angle that the quarterback has to lead me he cannot throw this ball late he is throwing this ball on time but if you get to the window or you get to this part of the field that the quarterback's throwing it to too early that makes this throw late so because he takes this very wide angle db's able to squeeze him to that sideline when he makes this break that is not enough space for that qb to lead. We started out inside of the numbers and we ended up maybe two yards outside of the numbers. We have to focus on getting skinny and getting vertical, not only to flip the DB's hips and get more separation, but to give that quarterback space. Because at the end of the day, DB could be all over us. There is no defense for a perfect throw. Quarterback puts it in a perfect spot, but we have to give him space to throw it in the perfect spot. So I'm going to play this full speed and then we're going to look at a clip from Justin Jefferson versus the exact same coverage look, the exact same split, but he's able to get a ton of separation so let's play it again full speed so make sure fellas when running any kind of outside route we have to give the quarterback space i know that ball was thrown in the dirt but that was probably best case scenario because i think that throw is picked off otherwise so let's look at this here so Justin Jefferson's got the same type of look, kind of an inside shade press look. He's lined up inside the numbers and he's running a 10 yard out. So he decides to go with a little bit different of a release here. But again, we're paying attention to the stem. So he goes off here, hesitates, but he's pushing up vertical. You see how he's not running away from the DB. That is what we have to do with my routes, fellas, because that can get him to overcommit. But also that gives the quarterback space. You have to understand how to run, you know, like a quarterback friendly route. I need to make sure that my quarterback has enough room to throw me open. He has enough room to make a good pass. But if I don't run a good route and I'm just running to open space, I don't care about timing. I don't care about spacing. I'm not running a quarterback friendly route. So let's look at what Jefferson does here. Comes off the ball, gives a little hesitation, but when he pushes up vertical on his route, his hips and his shoulders are committed to the fade. That is the one thing that I can tell you that will help you fix this problem. If you struggle restacking, if you struggle getting skinny, you should always be thinking that like you should you have a square. Like your shoulders and your hips, they make a square with your body. You should stay square to the end zone. You should stay facing the end zone, facing vertically on every single route that you run until we hit that break point because that will get the DB to open up the gate. That makes it look like a fade, but I also can give the quarterback space. If his hips and shoulders were turning here and he breaks this thing at like the middle of the numbers, bottom of the numbers and runs out, Lattimore not only has an angle to recover, but there's not enough space. Quarterback needs space, especially on an outside breaking throw. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson being patient, getting back vertical, getting skinny, and then giving the quarterback space by running a QB friendly route. 
All right, so this next example we're looking at here is going to be a slant route versus inside shade press. So there's a couple different things that um, I want to talk about here. So obviously, we're going to be showing the bad example first. Then we're going to show a good example and how you guys can build off of this. So we got inside shade press. He's running a slant. So when you run a slant versus inside shade press, um, a lot of people get confused as to what you want to do here because it's kind of an uncomfortable release. But if you can get this down, you'll get a ton of separation. It is called a diamond release. So I'm sure some of you have heard of it, but let's take a look at what this wide receiver did wrong. He comes off the ball here, but there's not really much of a sell. He's kind of almost, it almost looks like he's jogging his route. And that's why this DB is all over this thing. And this is everybody's biggest fear on a diamond release. What if the DB sits inside and is able to get hands? then you're screwed pretty much so why did this go wrong so when we go here a diamond release like if you were to draw it up on paper like a perfect scenario would be three hard steps at a 45 degree angle and you would be breaking off the third step db flips his hips open he thinks it's a fade and we slip under him that's perfect textbook scenario now when i take those three steps to the outside he says wide receiver gives a little hesitation one two three he takes a couple extra steps which isn't the end of the world but that can affect timing with my quarterback so I don't like those. If you're, if you're, if you're running this, or you're in an offense and you like to run a lot of three step slants. I don't like those extra steps of the break. It takes too long. But the one thing that he didn't do was run hard because if we're taking those three steps to the outside, we're trying to sell fade, right? So if I'm trying to make the DB open up and think fade, I actually have to run a fade I, for those three steps. I need to run hard. I need to open up my stride and my uh, hips and shoulders need to be committed to the fade. But when he comes off this thing, I'll play at full speed. So you guys can really tell he's jogging. Now, if I'm a DB and I see that his speed is half speed going up vertical, am I really thinking it's a fade? No, I'm getting prepared for him to slip underneath as that's what wide receivers do. Wide receivers will slow down before they make a change of direction, which is an indicator. Everything about route running, fellas, is eliminating indicators. Like, for example, that last that last clip, he ran directly towards the sideline, hips and shoulders towards the sideline. That wasn't a fade. It didn't look like a fade either, and it cut down space. But that's an indicator to the DB he's not going deep. That's an easy play for him. Us slowing down my speed, that's an easy play for him. You have to attack with those three steps running full speed. So I'm going to play this again. And then we're going to show a clip from Calvin Ridley doing the exact same release, which is the exact same coverage, but he's able to actually get open. So he's here, obviously inside shade press. When he Watch how much speed he has to the outside on this. So let's play at full speed. He goes here, one, two, three. Everything about those three steps looked like he was running deep, and that's what you guys have to get down. When you go here, yeah, and no, this is something that a lot of wide receivers don't do with their diamond release, is they don't take a prep step or something we call a kick step to generate explosion. It is very hard sometimes to come off the line of scrimmage and take those three steps on a diamond release from a position of no momentum. So your feet are flat, you're in your stance, and then you just burst off the line. You need to take some kind of step, some kind of preparation to shoot you outside to force the DB to flip his hips. So you see what Ridley does with his inside foot. He takes almost like a jab step i would call this more like a prep step where it's not a false step either i know a lot of wide receiver coaches will say it's a false step this is not a false step this is a part of the release but that small little jab step that he takes pushes him so he's actually got some explosion with this first second and third step it's almost like running a route like let's say for example you're running a post it's almost like at the top of the post route you obviously cut with your outside foot and you push you don't just round into the post break it's kind of like the same thing off the line. You take that jab step, that prep step to push you out and explode you. Because when you're running hard, you're running with speed, full stride, hips and shoulders are committed. What do you think that tells the DB? That it's a fade. And everything's a fade till it's not, fellas. That's how you guys have to think about route running. And that is what will get you guys open to run that route correctly. So slant versus inside shade press, let's make sure we're taking off the ball fast. Now, some of you might ask me, though. Some of you might have this question. I know a lot of people do because we get this question all the time. Coach, what if I do this and I run hard, I take my three steps, I'm running full speed, I'm going, and that DB is still sitting to the inside? Because that may happen. So let's talk about it. I'm going to play this full speed one more time. We're looking at the exact same wide receiver and the exact same DB from two clips ago. So this is that same same wide receiver who got jammed up on that slant, same DB. So that DB was sitting inside, doing a pretty good job staying patient. Now, if you're doing your job working to the outside, selling the route, running hard, running in full speed, and he's still not biting, good. 
Because when I have to run a fade route, I'm just going to dust him and leave him behind. If he wants to play that guessing game where it's a 50-50 shot, we're going to make him miss on one of those routes, either a slant or a fade. So that's exactly what this wide receiver does here. Let's play this full speed. So he comes off the line, makes it look the same, but that DB just wants to sit, so he just runs right by him. That's what you have to do to be able to win on routes, fellas. If you can do this, if this DB wants to guess, fine. Let him guess. I am always going to have a plan. If he wants to guess, 50% of the time, he will be wrong. Sometimes he might guess right, so be it. But if that guy's just going to sit to the inside, hold his leverage like some people teach, and I got to run that fade route, let's make my release look the exact same. Let's have the exact same tempo. And just like this example, he just runs right by him. Because if that DB wants to guess and sit inside, we could take him outside all day long. That's a great job there by that wide receiver, redeeming himself after that slant and recognizing that that DB is just going to sit inside no matter what. Sometimes against patient guys to set up the diamond release, to set up being able to slip under, you have to beat him on a fade a couple times. Do you need to get the ball every time? No. If you got a guy who's manned up on you every single snap and you know you're going to be running a lot of slants, when I'm backside on a run play, Maybe I work a fade. Maybe I let him feel my speed a little bit. So he's thinking about it. And then when you can make those releases look the same, that's how we can get open. All right. So this next example here is going to be a 10-yard out versus outside shade off man coverage. So this is on the goal line here. And um, this wide receiver is going to be trying to do a rocker step. So we're going to talk about the mechanics of this and why it does not work. Because this is not a bad um, route concept or what the wide receiver chooses to do is not bad. It's just the mechanics are a little off. And then we're going to show an example of Justin Jefferson doing this exact same route, exact same move but executing it. So let's play at full speed. So we go here, he throws his one, two, doesn't really get that DB to bite, and he's able to win and break up that pass. So let's talk about it. We got outside shade. DB's smart for being outside shade because the wide receiver has his split cut down. Wide receiver would not cut his split down this close and be like almost in this tight formation to run an inside route, unless it was like a drag or something. But he's this DB's probably not threatened by the post, the dig, the drag, because he has help to the inside. He's trying to protect the outside. So if I have to run an outside breaking route versus this coverage, I need to threaten his inside shoulder. So some people will run this route and what they'll do is they'll literally just go as hard as they can at this inside shoulder, try to get the DB to flip so they could slip underneath him. Now, what um, Darnell Mooney does right here is what some people also do is he attacks him and then he throws an inside head fake like a rocker step. So if you're working a rocker step and you're lined up on the left side, you would step with your left foot first, you would jab and then throw a hard cut to the inside with your right foot. So you would do that one, two, you do that left, right. So now when you make that move and you do that crossover, watch what Mooney does here with his first step. You see how wide it is outside of his frame? That doesn't allow you to push into the next move. There's not much explosion there. Yes, you're stepping wide, but there wasn't an explosive throw of your hip, explosive throw of the upper half. That doesn't sell like you're running a post when your first step on a rocker is wide. You want the step to be a hard step. You want it to be sudden in the grass, but if it steps super wide and it's outside of your frame, you cannot push off of it and get any kind of explosion back to the inside so even if i got that db to jump i can't really drive out of it watch his next step with his left foot because in theory he should be cutting off of this foot pushing this left one should be opening up and he should get out but when he doesn't push that next step is here next step crosses over but he's not driving out of the break and that gives the db plenty of time to recover so let's play this full speed so obviously we don't want to step wide with that rocker step now we're going to bring up an example of justin jefferson doing it where he takes a great first step on the rocker and generates a lot of explosion so let's watch this clip here outside shade he's going to be running a 10 yard out i want you to watch the difference between the two of these you see how much more explosive that move is and you see his first step out of that rocker step has a lot of speed so so let's talk about it. First step here on the rocker. It's a hard step, but it's inside of his frame. He can actually push off of this foot to sell the post, the dig, the inside move, because this was sudden and it was inside of his shoulder frame. When you reach outside your frame, fellas, you cannot push. Now, the second step, you want to emphasize it. You want to throw your hip. You want to step wide. It's more of a, it's a bigger step for sure, but the first step has got to set you up for that. It's got to be an explosive step so you can throw your hip actually get my hips and shoulders involved, have an explosive cut, and now watch what he does here. That first step out of the break is actually getting him out of the out route. It's not a negative step. He's not taking extra steps. He's throwing, 
pushing and driving out. That is a textbook rocker step versus that outside shade look. Let's play it again full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson pushing vertical, attacking inside shoulder, and using that rocker step to win on that out. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys would like access to that eight-week gym and field wide receiver training schedule, again, check out that very first link in the description below. And if you have any comments at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We appreciate the feedback. I'll see you guys next time.